ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमस्कार एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेशन ऑन हाउ टू स्टडी द भगवदगीता दिस विल बी आर लास्ट सेशन ऑन भगवदगीता विद जगदम्ब कृपा वी हैव रीच द एंड ऑफ दिस जर्नी एंड वी विल बी कवरिंग द एटीन चैप्टर दैट इज मोक्ष संन्यास योग so uh, hi nilesh before we begin let me wish you many many happy returns of the day jived sharda shatam nanded sharda shatam vardhed sharda shatam uh, may you have a wonderful life ahead uh, so let's begin with the session so now having reached the 18th chapter moksha sanyas yog you know we started with sankhya such a beautiful concept of nayanam chindanti shastrani the powerful Uh, indestructible nature of our atma and now we are coming and trying to see how we do we achieve this moksha or mukti so in the beginning of this chapter krishna starts with talking of sanyas and tyag uh, so can you elaborate on these concepts of what he is trying to tell us or trying to tell uh, arjun basically hmm. uh thank you for wishing me on my uh, birthday okay so 365 days somebody always has a birthday <laughs> you know somebody has a birthday there is always a birthday celebration going on somewhere so back to sanyas and a tyag uh, we have to also do the tyag you know so nothing wrong in celebrating birthday but not make a big deal out of it you know that will be considered tyag okay to celebrate not make a big deal you know uh, so sanyas and a tyag so this is a, i mean there is a particular nyaya nyaya in uh, Uh, our ancient indian narratives but it's not coming to me so what i would say is uh, we we use this term uh, like uh, marathi made in marathi we will say khutta kiwa khunta halavun balkat karne okay so you have pegged something in the ground mm-hmm. you want it to be solid yeah. okay not unstable but you test it to see make sure that it is solid mm-hmm. it, uh, it's not moving uh, steady it this question of arjun is in that light mm-hmm. so now everything is been discussed you know uh, sattva raja tam you know when it comes to ahar like mm-hmm. that is uh, related to the sharir or yajna dana tap which is what all the vedic kriya you know mm-hmm. related to that so related to the sustenance related to your own mind you know dana is very much for your mind but also bringing the uh, equity mm-hmm. you know across the society you know yatha shakti you know so vibhaga uh, that's dana you know so yajna dana tap even tap how what kind of tap so that is been discussed in 17 so in that context like uh, in the context of that sattva raja tam as applied to everything now arjun is asking this question maybe as a clarification or maybe just for a validation so think of it we have put the peg in the ground we know it's solid just checking something mm-hmm. like this and the question is relevant so in a way you can say arjun is asking maybe for our benefit you know mm-hmm. maybe for his benefit too which is like this so now sanyasa which means like we saw this in a previous chapter like chapter 5 is what giving uh, one one way of looking at it is getting rid of all the actions all the kriya all the karma and all the karma rather sometimes people confuse that with a kriya mm-hmm. they say um, uh, i am not going to do anything no that's wrong you you are forced to do even when you sit it's considered a action it's a verb sitting is a verb and sleeping is a verb the only choice you have is is it a sattva raja or tam mm. okay so that is so then so what is sanyas is also explained but now that our, uh, krishna discuss sattva raja tam uh, the question is should we give all the karma or are there certain karmas to be kept because there is a discussion of certain actions like such as a dana yajna tap or even ahara to be satvik and the idea seems to be those are the good ones so do we keep them that is the context and the simple answer and this is i am saying it simple but krishna does this all the time and i think that is a also a guidance for all of us there is no point simply repeating it's important to understand when we read something Uh, when we are listening to someone but there is no point simply repeating something in a parrot like fashion what is the value of it you know so w- what helps is when we try to 
hear or when we try to read, the best way to internalize is to think through some our life, uh, our life events. Like think of a past event or even a current event that you might be dealing with and say, how can I apply this knowledge to it? So now sattva, sorry, sannyas means like as if like, hey, sannyas is like a, uh, what you can say, um, wholesale, wholesale rejection of something, wholesale Renunci giving. Huh? Renunciation. Renunci Renun right. But my point, yeah, renunciation. But my point is renunciation wholesale. That's yeah. how the sannyas may be understood. And so what is the context of a sannyas and a tyaga? So Krishna is giving a higher up answer. Krishna never gives the answer at the level the question is asked. Krishna always takes it to the next level. Murari is Tritiya Pantha. That's why Krishna is a great. Okay. And Parama Purush and Paramatma and we identify, you know, totally with that Paramatma. So Sanyas is a wholesale re uh, renunciation, say rejection, renunciation. Now, so what is a Tyaga? Ah, so now it is said, because we have discussed Sattva Rajatama, so let's take uh, actions. It could be yadnya, it could be dana, it could be tapa, doesn't matter, but it's an action. It could be what you eat. But once we classify them into sattva, raja and tama, sannyasa, it would appear, it is saying, reject all of it, reject all actions. And what Tyaga is saying is, hold on, uh, you definitely reject all the rajas, rajas and tamasic activities, whatever it is, whatever the kind you're looking at. But sattvic you keep. And in Dhaneshwari, in the 18th chapter, like in discussion of this, uh, Dhaneshwar describes this beautifully. What is a Nitya Karma and what is a Naimittik Karma? And they both are to be done. Niyatam Kuru Karmatvam. Huh. Krishna says, right? Niyatam Kuru Karmatvam Karma. So you cannot, for even for bodily maintenance, you need to do your Nitya Karma. You cannot Correct. do the tag of your Nitya Karma. Yeah. Right. Right. And again, he describes them beautifully. Uh, is like a nitya karma, you said, right? Now think of it. So nit what are nitya karma around the house? So uh, like our personal uh, hygiene, right? Getting all the things done, uh, keeping the house clean, uh, cooking properly, cooking nutritious meal and so on. Now what happens? Those are nitya karma. Nyaneshwar describes it so beautifully. He says in some context, such as uh, let's say we are having a guest, some guest is coming. Well, again, we maintain our hygiene, we keep the house clean or we make the house clean. We also cook nutritious food, but we might have some additional emphasis because a guest is coming. Yeah. That becomes a naimittik karma. It's the same nitya karma becomes a naimittik karma. Mm -hmm. And now since I have taken, uh, I wouldn't call this digression, that's very much relevant. That's why Nyaneshwar discusses it. But I want to bring something from my research. For example, in Mahabharat, uh, in Indian context, astronomy is time. Okay, we use astronomy to know the time, what day it is today, what is the tithi, what season of the year, what month and so on. Now, when, when Bhagwan Vyasadeva is composing Mahabharat, mm -hmm. which is Bhagavad Gita is a part of, in order to time stamp it, he is using what is Nitya, Nitya astronomy, that is everything that is there happening every day, but he is using in a naimittik sense. Just like when a guest is coming, you might make one additional dish. Yeah, right. Or uh, the table was already clean, but now you clean it more. Hmm. So it was already there and you, you were going to clean it, but now you clean with additional uh, care, let's say. Something like this, something that are otherwise nitya observations in the sky, he is putting them in a naimittik context in that fashion and that's like there are 300 plus in Mahabharat or in Ramayana there are 600 plus that yeah. Bhagwan Valmiki, Bhagwan Valmiki does. Or for example Nitya is yes the stars moving but Nemitik is yes Arundhati is now moving ahead of Vasishta. Very good and Arundhati could be moving ahead of Vasishta because Arundhati was moving ahead of Vasishta for about 5000 years. Yes. Okay, and and some people who don't understand these uh, subtleties of sannyasa, tyaga, nitya, naimittik, they ask, well, so if it was uh, going around, going ahead of Vasishta for 5,000 years, why is Vasa mentioning in 5561 BC, only in 5561 BC? And what is the answer? Because the war was happening. Because then. the war is happening. Yeah. Okay, nitya, 
Nitya turns into Naimittik because a special event is taking place. And that is true for all other observations. Okay. Now, let me, uh, sorry, no, but I, I want to just answer that. So what happens, uh, complete that answer. So now, uh, Sanyasa says, give up everything. Tyaga is saying, definitely give Rajas and Tamasic actions. But it says, Tyaga, it says, the sattvic actions that you will do, sattvic activities that you will do, do it with a falasha tyag or fala tyag in mind. Yeah. So there the tyaga is of a fala. Mm. So then what does that mean is, think of a beauty of sannyasa versus tyaga. Tyaga is a much bigger principle. Mm -hmm. Because this falasha tyaga, fala tyaga is just given. If you use that criteria, guess what? We don't have to ask the question which karma to keep and which karma to get rid of. Because if you, if we truly use intelligently, use and we'll talk about jnana and everything afterwards. If we intelligently use this litmus test of fala tyaga, falasha tyaga, then there is no question of trying to ask additional decision making which karma to keep and which karma to give up because if we apply the principle of falatyag say something like a stealing simply should go away yeah okay because you are stealing but whatever you still you have to give up so what exactly why exactly you are doing yeah. so rajasic and tamasic activity just fall off and sattvic activities are also to be done mm -hmm. in the with the thought of falatyag and that is a tyag yeah. In fact, uh, uh, this uh, the uh, principle of Sattva Raja Tama mm -hmm. has been extended even in this chapter, uh, where he is extending it to Jnana, Karma, Dhruti, and even Sukha. So, Sattvic yeah. Sukha and Tamasic Sukha. Uh, so, in, in some sense, Sukha, uh, in, in terms of Tyaga, may have a negative connotation. Like, if there is a Tyaga, then what is Sukha? But Sukha in the Tyaga. So, in yeah. that sense, can you explain... Uh, the difference between a sattvic sukh and a tamasic sukh okay uh, so uh, see there is a there is a discussion of many subjects right so we discuss the tyaga but mm -hmm. after that we have a discussion of jnana karma dhruti, karta uh, dhruti karta dhruti, buddhi sukha okay. and, and what nyaya nyata uh, no, true, but uh, when it comes to Sattva Rajatama, there yeah. is a discussion of what we just discussed, right? Like a Buddhi, Dhruti, mm -hmm. Sukha, Karta, and I may be missing something. Yeah. Yeah, no. uh, and yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, I want to give a bigger context of this because again, remember, this is a summary chapter. Okay. So finally, we are getting into action. And at the end of it, uh, Arjuna's, uh, Krishna's expectation for Arjuna is now start fighting. Yeah. We have discussed enough, you know, yeah. get into action. So think of this, somebody wants to, uh, again, I want to take use a metaphor. Somebody wants to say, hey, you know what? I don't know how to cook. Mm. Or I don't know if I should cook and always eat outside. And he says, no, eating outside is bad. Occasionally, when you don't have a choice, eating outside is okay. But you should learn how to cook. You should learn how to cook in a nutritious, in a nutritious meal and in a good way. So now in order to educate, just like you will say, okay, in, so let's say Indian cooking. For example, you say, okay, here is how the spices work. These are the spices. These are the, and this is how that spice box. Marathi, Mr. Vanasa Dabba, yes. right? Or something like this. Yes. Then you say, these are the vegetable family. These are the lentils group. You know, these are the different grains. These are the fruits and these are other vegetables. So we are describing that. Now we are describing, now meaning through Bhagavad Gita, as if like, we are describing the different nutritional aspects of vegetables, why these spices, where are they found, how you can substitute, so on and so forth. Now we are ready to actually practice it as if. And in that context, now Krishna is bringing, okay, so hey, we discussed Jnana 13, 14, 15. Okay, we discussed Dhyana 6, 7, 8. We discussed Karma 3, 4, 5. I'm bringing it together. That's what he's saying. So for a Jnata, Neya Jnana. So think of that as like a, a 13, 14, 15, if you want to consider that. Okay. He's saying, okay, as a representative of that, I'm taking Jnana. Okay. Or Kriya Kartutva, Kriya Karma Kartutva, as a representative of that, I'm taking Karma. So Jnana plus Karma, but finally, these are idle by themselves. There is somebody who is implementing or employing them. That's a Karta. So therefore, he's taking Jnana, he's taking Karma, he's taking a Karta. Okay. And 
uh, then uh, I mean we will discuss afterwards. But buddhi, uh, dhruti, because that karta needs the buddhi, karta needs the dhruti. That's what he's bringing together, and therefore he's discussing sattva, raja, tama of each of this category. And you can talk about those specifically, like sattva of a buddhi. I, I wanted to ask you, how do you differentiate between a sattvic sukha and a raj, tamasic sukha? Why don't you just, I mean, Bhagavad Krishna explains it. I don't have a Bhagavad Gita in front of me. So if you want to do it, please go ahead. No, I, for me, simple is uh, the, the moment Falatya comes in, everything becomes Sattvic. So even if it is Sukha, hmm. everything with a Viveka Buddhi and a Falatya Vritti, hmm. even the Sukha becomes Sattvic. Otherwise, hmm. with greed and with loss of Vivek, even hmm. the Sukha will become, I mean, Sukha will be for uh, for a moment hmm. it will be temporary and it will be rajasic or tamasic hmm. so tyag falatyag is uh, very critical for example yesterday you know i run this swadharma darshan uh, hmm. group right where we hmm. discuss bhagavad gita every week hmm. one of the uh, one of the participants was asking me so uh, suppose uh, 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 i am telling some uh, telling some somebody you know a friend hmm. of mine uh, hmm. the good of uh, say fasting hmm. Or the bad of eating, say, non-veg. The negative mm. of eating a non-vegetarian food. Now, by merely talking bad, have I become tamasic? Because I'm talking bad about something. So, for my, for, I gave uh, that participant an example saying that I do water fast. I've been doing it for a year. I knew about it for many years, but never spoke about it because I had no experience, first-hand mm. experience. Now, I have a first-hand experience. So, I go to a, a various uh, social circles and I tell them, you know, these are the benefits. Mm -hmm. But I see the moment I try to convert them into mm -hmm. that concept, it becomes rajasik or tamasik. My job is to just tell them the way it is, the way I have experienced and the way the science uh, talks about it and leave it at that. Mm -hmm. If I try to pressurize, if I try to convert somebody from becoming a, a non veg to a veg or from, oh, you must do a water fast and become attached to it, the attachment makes it tamasic or rajasic. It is with the detachment, with not expecting any fruits of your talk. If mm. I do it, then it is everything becomes sattvic for mm. that matter. You know? So detachment and palatya is extremely important to make anything sattvic. Right. Okay. Now that's that's great. I mean, you used uh, another word that I forgot I was going to say. Oh yeah. The, uh, uh, what is that? As an experience or something you said, like something of that effect. Uh, my own experience of doing that water fast, 36 uh -huh. hours water fast uh -huh. every week. Yeah. Right. So, so, so through your own experience, right? What you, what you get, that gives you a certain experience. Now, many people, so, so you asked me the question and I'll, you already gave the answer. I'll add to it through uh, a, a couple of ex specific examples, but uh, I open Bhagavad Gita here. I, when you said, I said, well, Krishna gives the answer why I want to improvise it if I cannot improvise. So like the Shlok 37, you know, in 18th chapter. Uh, by the way, just as something, a side tidbit that people may love to hear. But first the Shlok, Yatad Agre Vishamiva Pariname Amruta Opamam Tat Sukham Satvikam Proktam Atma Buddhi Prasadajam. Okay, so that is the definition of a Satvik Sukha. Mm -hmm. So, um, in Marathi, it will be Abhyase Godaze Hoya Dukhacha Anta Dakavi Ze Kadu Vikh Arambi Anti Amruta Tulyachi Atmayata Shuddha Buddhisa Labale Sukha Satvika. So, Ze Kadu. If you can explain in English, that will be good. Okay. Ze kadu, yeah, yeah, sure. Ze Kadu Vikh Arambi. That is that Yatat Agre Vishamiva. Something that at the beginning appears to be like a poison appears hmm. to be hard. Now, somebody, somebody is going to say, if it is a sattvic sukha, why is it hard at the beginning? Okay? And that is that context. For example, I mean, we can talk of uh, uh, reading, like we were, uh, remember the other day we were watching together, not to go into that detail, but an interview of a couple. Yes. And uh, she, the lady wasn't interested in reading. She, she wants to read, but she still cannot read, right? So think of it. Actually, the joy of reading person will have. Now, if you read, I read, we know it. But somebody who doesn't or maybe struggling for some reason may say, well, but yeah, I know not. And we cannot force him. But even she in this case also understands reading is important. She just cannot do it. That is that yatat agre vishamiva. At the beginning, it feels very tough. Now, how are we going to get to the sattvic sukha? Through what? Through all this we have discussed. Nishkama karma, yeah. dhyana, vairagya, 
tyago and people people are so i mean all of us people we included are we are so attached to our thing parting away with something is difficult think of it uh, when we work in a job and we get a certain salary before we may not be even aware that am i going to get this much salary when the salary is offered and let's say it's beyond my expectation i get very joyful and elated which means what i mean i why if i get extremely joyful beyond my uh, because is i'm getting something beyond my imagination in some way i don't uh, i don't i think hey i'm getting much more than what i deserve in some fashion i'm happy that's good but in no time if you notice it becomes a part of a background knowledge and now you take it for I granted think. yeah right you think i i deserve this and suppose that the next year for some circumstances if the company or whoever uh, ask you a business ask you to take a cut in your salary now you are in a you meaning one is in a depressed mode for example right why does that happen because now you have set up a certain expectation it has affected your sukha yeah. okay just the side tidbit i wanted to say is yat yatad agre vishamiva parinami amruta upamam this shlok tat sukham satvikam proktam atma buddhi prasadajam tat sukham so Uh, uh, that's, so that's the one that feels uh, tough at the beginning, like a poison. Yato dagre vishemi va parinami amruto pamam. When the final outcome is realized, it is like ambrosia. Yeah. Okay. That one is a satvik sukha. Now this statement, parinam tatat sukham satvikam proktam atma buddhi prasadajam. This statement is engraved on a Sanskrit medal. that is given in india for 300 years you know sir william jones like who came and that's how the whole indology started and all the, the what you call say distortion also unfortunately but he he loved this shlok so much tat sukham satvikam proktam atma buddhi prasadajam is engraved on that sanskrit medal that he started some 300 years ago just as a side tidbit and um, so then therefore the reason i didn't want to give the answer is i'm saying krishna is giving such a beautiful answer okay so i don't need to add something to it but uh, sorry go ahead uh, i had some I example yeah. no, hmm. i got it so i i tried to give this example through uh, yesterday itself this happened through uh, trying to bifurcate between what can be satva what can be tarja and what can be tama hmm. uh, this example so we can move ahead and uh, uh, okay no no hold on i i i recall that example that i wanted to mention Uh, something is going on because it's so very fresh uh, it's um, going on in the social media like not social mm-hmm. media i created one youtube video okay uh, discussing three types of fallacies mm-hmm. and somebody had written a comment a nice comment uh, to one of my previous videos in the same series like the different fallacies that i'm discussing mm-hmm. and so i took that opportunity to discuss the three fallacies because instantaneously this individual created those three fallacies mm-hmm. okay now the reason i'm saying this is this is a good example of satvika sukha hmm. so the person asked a question and i asked the question backward you know and i'm not going to the detail of it and the person gave some answer and i said you know he again responded to that it was a very crisp discussion hmm. i said okay so now the way you have responded you say hey, he is saying this is true in his mind because of xyz hmm. and i say what you have said x for example as a response is essentially a authority fallacy mm-hmm. what you are saying as a why as a response to the question i had I, i had asked i told him that it's a consensus fallacy mm-hmm. then he got into uh, he r- got right up you know because like i'm pointing his fallacy that's what happens to human <laughs> human nature so he said well so what you are doing is a arrogance fallacy he told me you know and so i responded to that so now the the last fallacy i said is the i said it's a burden of proof fallacy and these fallacies exist there is no arrogance fallacy by the way that he created and nice creativity there uh, but uh, the burden of proof fallacy is whatever i have asserted is there in my book with all the evidence hmm. now he was saying some counterpoint that hey you are saying mahabharat happened 55 61 bc so are you saying this is happened this happened before indus valley civilization and before vedic age now the underlying tone is how can something happen before vedic age uh, when vedic age is 1000 bc that's what he was claiming mm-hmm. and i was i simply asked so the vedic age in 1000 bc that you are claiming what is the empirical scientific evidence in support of that and then he said let me just give that because that will come to this satvik sukha he said because that's there in the textbooks 
Okay. That's what the historians are saying. Mm -hmm. So I said, this is an authority fallacy. And then he said, uh, many historians agree to this. I said, that is a consensus fallacy. Many historians, they're agreeing something. If it's a something truthful, truth, or if something is scientific, let's say, it doesn't need a consensus. If something is consensus, based on a consensus, it's not scientific. So therefore, it is a consensus fallacy. Therefore, it is authority fallacy. But the reason I was asking him to do this is the claim that he was making, he was not aware of it. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of knowledge is this? What kind of sukha is this? You know, it's a very tamasic sukha. Tamasic, yeah. Taking pleasure. Tamasic jnana. Ta tamasic, um, very good. Tamasic jnana. Being happy with that man is a tamasic sukha. <laughs> tamasic sukha, right? It's a sukha, but of a tamasic kind. Okay, the person is feeling good about it. But how can he change that? That will take yatad agre vishamiva pariname amrutopamo. The person will need to study, person will need to do tapasya, abhyasa. Then he or she will come to the right knowledge. And so. also, it is not that he does an abhyasa or tap for one day and it will happen. It hmm. is years of, you know, for example, we doing, uh, like I doing Devi Sadhana or, you know, we discussing that finally. Why did that? Why did I take up doing water fast? I wanted to even remove the detachment to food. Air is something I don't know whether we'll be able to remove the detachment to, like breathing. But yes, food possible. You can get detached to food, and that that is what we we were experimenting last one year. It yeah. is very much possible, easily possible. And now that what was tough has become very easy. It has become a part of life. It is from that tamasic to satvic. It has already become. Right. Let me add a couple of points to that, what you just said about the fasting. Again, related to the same subject that we are discussing Jnana, Buddhi, Sattvic Buddhi and Sattvic Sukha and Sattvic Buddhi, Sattvic Jnana. You mentioned that it won't happen instantaneously. You have to give a long time. Yes. Okay. Now, it worked for you because certain things that were uh, we uh, might be or our audience might take it for granted also must be discussed, which is, for example, Dhruti. Mm. Okay. So, Dhruti and mm -hmm. also has a Sattva Rajatama. We'll not go into details. People can read through Bhagavad Gita. Courage, which is courage. Uh, ah, courage, determination, right? Tenacity, perseverance. I mean, you can combine all into this. Mm -hmm. So think of, um, uh, think of uh, Jnana is like, a, uh, or good, sorry, Buddhi. And I want to talk about Buddhi. Buddhi is like something that gives a direction, let's say. Mm -hmm. Or the clarity, crispness, mm -hmm. ability to discriminate. That's a Buddhi. Okay. Dhruti is that gives the impetus. Dhruti yeah. is one that provides when to speed up, but also when to slow down. Like some complicated subject, you say, okay, let's take it slowly. Let yeah. me study this. Some places you said, why are you wasting time? Like you will say many times to me, right? Okay, hey, this is done. Let's just move on, you know, yeah. like whatever action we are doing and so on. But the point I want to mention is simply sometime giving the time and you did not say that. But in fact, you said, hey, it takes time. That is the point you are emphasizing. Yes. And the point, I'm, which is correct, the point I'm emphasizing to adding to what you just said is that simply doing it for longer may not be sufficient. Like go back to that individual. He may read and read and read and yes. still reach the wrong conclusion. I yes. mean, there are enough of bozos out there in the index space. Okay, yes. even writing books, writing blogs and writing utter nonsense. Now, why is that happening? That has to do with the buddhi. Mm. okay there is no the buddhi is not discriminating enough so i want to just use the tamasi buddhi as an example as an illustration okay adharmam dharmam itiya manyate tamasavruta sarvarthan vipari tamscha buddhi sa partha tamasi so if we have to talk of buddhi sattvic uh, sattvic rajasi and tamasic buddhi sattvic buddhi is the one which is capable of discriminating capable of comprehending what is the truth capable of comprehending what is the untruth also, yeah. the Rajasi Buddhi is a Samshay Buddhi. It is a halfway. Na ghar ka, na ghat ka. You know, whichever lecture they go, they think this is correct. Whichever person they listen to, they yeah. may think this is correct. Whichever book they read, or yeah. this person is also correct when they read that book. Other, they, the two books may be saying exactly opposite. Yeah. Even for the same question, like when did Mahabharata war happen? When did Ramayana happen? You know, should you fast or should you not fast? With all the increment discrimination, but they just say, whichever they listen to, they say, oh, this is great. No, oh, this is great. This is great. Or this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. This is good. This, you know, there is no discriminating power. It's a Samshay Vritti. 
the, their knowledge is there, but it's a unstable. That's a rajasi, rajasi buddhi. And the one that I just uh, quoted, adharmyam dharmyam itiya manyate tamasavruta sarvarthan vipari tamsha buddhi sa partha tamasi. This is a basically viparyaya buddhi. Always understands it wrong. Mm. Actually, I know a few individuals, not many, thankfully, who always get, get it wrong. If, if you tell a humor, they will get it wrong. If you uh, discuss something from Bhagavad Gita and they will say with a great pride, they will say at the end, okay, so let me summarize it for you or something. And then they summarize totally wrong. And you say, my God, why did I waste one hour? And this happens in the ordinary life also. Like you're just trying to teach somebody the rules of a traffic and the person may misunderstand them, you know? So that is, that is what it is. And I'm saying, so in this per case, this person, and it's not pointing at this person that the discussion I was telling you related to my YouTube video. That person will get Sattvic Sukha if he is willing to invest. Mm -hmm. And the hope is that he also builds on his Buddhi, builds on his Dhruti in a Sattvic fashion. Otherwise, just putting efforts will not do it. That's also the point. True. Yeah. True. So moving on, uh, you know, as a Jyotishi, I keep get, uh, people keep asking me, my clients keep asking me, you know, uh, uh, if my stars are like this, if my the Mahadasha is like this, then what can I do? I mean, you know, this is hmm. going to happen. So where I always emphasize the uh, role of free will hmm. in our life. So we started with the Sankhya and that has come from Bhagavad Gita. I mean, there is, you cannot, uh, Bhagavad Gita is one Grantha which has emphasized free will in every every chapter, I would say, where in every chapter, uh, Krishna tells Arjun, get up and fight. Go get up and fight. Do your swadharma uh, uh, and fight. Go and fight. Uh, so he, he cannot, uh, you know, overemphasize the free will part in Bhagavad Gita. I mean. so, uh, uh, so I think the next few things we'll talk of uh, free will, the next few uh, shlokas. And uh, wherein, you know, we start with Adhishthanam Tatha Karta. So the, we started with uh, Sankhya, that is Atma, the indestructible nature of Atma, which is such a powerful, you know, if I think people try to internalize even that one shlok, Nainam Chindanti Shastrani, Nainam Dhati Pavaka, I think 50% of their miseries will get over, is in my opinion. That's my opinion. Uh, because then you know that you're going to be there. The Atma is going to be there and do not associate yourself with the Sharir or with the Mana Buddhi also in that sense. And then the, uh, the free will of the Atma. Mm -hmm. Where Krishna is trying to uh, explain to us as to how do we, uh, 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 how do we uh, 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 ensure that a task is done or a goal is achieved. So can you elaborate and give us, ex explain us this this particular shloka of Adhishthanam Tatha Karta Pranam Chukrita Gudam Vividhashta Pritak Cheshta Daivam Chaivatra Panchamam Yeah, uh, well, three, four things related to this. So see if I can keep it uh, short. That's a very challenge for me to do it. Uh, this is very important verse, but let's start with the free will versus destiny that you, you said. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we discussed that in Adhyatma. Okay, so think of Adhyatma as uh, to know uh, who, who am I? Mm -hmm. Or what is this in the yeah. sense of, okay, so if we talk of Parmeshwar, who is that? You know, so basically, who am I? Adhyatma, there's not much difference. Uh, how big is it? Or what is it? Or how does it work? Well, that becomes Vidyan. Okay. And in a, in a Indian context, in a Sanatana, Hindu context, this was never a issue. issue. But you can just imagine how tamasic the attitudes would be in certain areas of the world, like Western Europe predominantly, for example, but you can see other parts also, where it became a point of a fight. Like soon, that's why it turned into the uh, state versus religion, or, you know, like keep Dharmic versus Vaidnyan. Uh, uh, that become a fight. It didn't become a fight. Because who am I is the Adhyatma. That's what literally the Adhyatma means. Okay. And how big is it? And how does it work? That is the Vidyan. The reason I'm saying this is it comes, brings back to free will and destiny. Mm -hmm. the, the discussion or the, the controversy, you can say, or this uh, discussion that continues in the adhyatmic field, like in the astrology sense, like is it a free will versus destiny? Or, or in terms of Niti Shastra, Yoga Vasishta, for example, when Vasishta is advising to Rama, is it, adhyat is it uh, free will? Is it destiny? And, 
Vashishta goes to say that destiny is fictitious. What we call as destiny is fictitious. It is yeah. nothing but the result of our efforts in the past lives. Correct. And I, I just for fun, I will add now, if uh, just like the way Goodell, you know, Nobel laureate in mathematics made the statement, uh, when we say a statement like this is goes to Pada and Pada Dnyan, you know, so that needs uh, understanding this needs more than a grammar, by the way. But the discussion is the God does not exist, just like destiny is fictitious. And, you know, the Goodell would have said, guess what? The God does not exist and destiny is fictitious. These both statements in some sense actually prove the existence of God and existence of destiny. Okay. Because there is some concept, There's destiny, some concept. You know, which we are saying is fictitious or God does not exist. Now, bring back to this. So you're right. That's what exactly says. But what my, my point was in Vidnana. So I'm saying the likes of Karl Popper, likes of uh, Hume, likes of Kant, you know, likes of Poincaré. Uh, I mean, these Newton, Kepler, all these folks, you know, they are discussing this problem for a long time. Is it a destiny? Or is it a free will? Now, they use different words. They say, is the world deterministic or undeterministic? Okay, which is undeterministic is like a free will, so to say. We can influence it. And deterministic is everything is just decided. We are just an idle watcher, you know, viewer in it. Right? Now, the reason, so that's, that is that has to do with this shloka. And let's admit that maybe it is a mystery. I mean, of course, we are saying it's a free will. And Vasishta, Bhagwan, I mean, Vasishta is saying that uh, destiny is fictitious, but still people don't want to accept it. That confusion can also come from the fact that when you get, when you start, like when you start a car, when you get a car and you say, if the car comes out as a lemon, you know, you say, oh, that was my destiny, mm -hmm. you know. So which means the car came as a prarabdha. The car had certain features, certain cap capacities. You bought it. So, yeah, it's a destiny. Prarabdha literally means an initial condition, a jump start. What are the conditions? So that was there. That we could not choose in our lives. We were born to certain parents. We were born in a certain place. That's given. Okay. So that's kind of a, we have to accept it. You know, there is no point fighting about it. Yeah. Go ahead. In fact, I'll go. In fact, we have chosen. I will go a step be, be beyond that also saying that we have chosen where to come take birth and what circumstances. We don't remember the reason for it. That is <laughs> Correct. That's why, yeah, that's why Vasishta is saying destiny is fictitious. Yeah. We have chosen, but at least it appears to us as if I did not have a choice. Yes. Yes. Right? It okay. appears. It's like, see, even buying a car, I'm saying at the end of the day, I can only buy the car out of which that exists. Yes. Yes. Okay, in that sense. Yes. So, so uh, this particular shlok has five aspects. Adishthanam tatha karta, karanam cha prathak vidam, vividhascha prathak cheshta, Daivam Chaivatra Panchamam. And so my point is, just like in a corporate world, we talk about, uh, hey, is there a point trying to change management style of someone? Or when we are doing a sanskar on children or the grown-ups, because the grown-ups need sanskar too, you know. Uh, is there a point doing it? Is there a point trying to change someone? Is it even possible? Okay, because uh, thinking that you can change someone is in some sense what? Again, that's not a clear answer there, but in some sense, it is the free will that we are trying to change, right? So, Adishthanam Tatha Karta Karnam Cha Pratak Vidam Vividasya Pratak Cheshta Daivam Chavatra Panchavam. For a simplicity, the nature versus nurture, they say. Let's say even actually that's not true because that's why the destiny is a fictitious. I agree with that. But my point is, let us say 80% is given. You know, whether it's a car, whether it's your birth and human life or whatever it is, the 20% is still in your hand. Mm -hmm. Even if you have got a lemon, now you decide what you can fix, how you can drive that car carefully, you know, something like this. Whatever human life you have got, sometime, you know, everything is not the way you want it. I mean, yeah. none of us feel like we got everything we wanted. But now that what you have, what you can do it. So even if you separate this as an 80-20, and the reason I'm doing that is there are five elements, you know, Adishthanam, Tathakarta, Karanam, Chaprutak, Vidam, Vividasya, Pratak, Cheshta, Daivam, Chaivata, Daivam, you know, those are the five. So even if let's say 80% is given, that is something, although it was based on your past karma, let's say, but right now you don't think it, the 20%, can you change it? I'm saying that 20%, so when people come to you for say astrology, they may even, uh, in a very pragmatic fashion, they may even look at it as a 20%. I'm saying as the smallest percentage possible, the, still the question to ask is, since 80% you cannot do anything, at least in their mind, 
anything that you do based on that knowledge of through astrology, let's say, what can you do in that remaining 20% daivam? You know, that is something in your hand. You decide not to do this, that, that you can do. So that's one. Um, what is this verse about? This verse is discussing Dharma Shastra. This verse, in a way, is discussing Artha Shastra. This verse is discussing Samaj Shastra. This verse is discussing Moksha Shastra. Okay, so the ingredients are there. So you can use this for Artha Karan, Dharma Karan, Samaja Karan, Moksha Karan. You know, that's what you're doing. And one last story I will tell you related to this is a few years ago. Now, this is going back, uh, I can't recall, but let's approximately say 20 years ago or around that time, 15 plus years ago. Uh, it so happened in some context, I read a lot. And in one context, I got into the reading the books of uh, a reasonably famous name, Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Yeah. Okay, he reads, in, he reads into, I mean, you know him, reads into, writes into finance related, you know, investment and whatnot, economics. And uh, he has written a number of books, but uh, say, uh, I'll mention a couple of books like uh, Black Swan or Fooled by Randomness. And so I remember those books and then I have read others. But at that time, say, I read one book, I read another book, I read maybe his third book. And all along, I'm saying, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it, I'm liking it. But what he's saying into this long book, and, you know, things need to be explained in detail and things need to be explained in a compact form. But he says, all of this is there somewhere in an extremely compact form. But I couldn't think. I said, I know it, but where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And one day, while I was taking shower, mm -hmm. suddenly this verse occurred to me. And I said, ah, this verse summarizes everything Nassim Nicholas Taleb is writing in the two or three books I had read at that time. And that verse, by the way, and I'll stop on this one for this verse, was this verse. Adishthanam tathakarta karanam cha prathak vidam vividascha prathak cheshta daivam chaivatra panchamam. Back to you. So it, this also coincides with Upadrushta Anumanta Bharta Bhukta Maheshwar. Hmm. So unless the, you start doing the vividha cheshta with uh, methods of achieving that success or whatever goal you have set in, right. even the uh, is not going to uh, help you, you know, in that sense. Yeah, they, yeah. Do something about it. Yeah, there were, therefore, our uh, mutual friend, uh, Sri Fadkeji, you know, he, he says, uh, Adhyatma is a refined science yes. or refined Vidyan. Vidyan is a refined Adhyatma. Very true. Okay. Right. Like that, yes. Yeah, so, so this uh, Adhishtanam Tata Karta Karanam Cha Prathak Vidam Vidasha Prathak Sheshta, think of this as a Vidyan. Hmm. Vidyan in this sense, you know, like practically action oriented. And Upadrashta Anumantacha Varta Bhokta Maheshwaram, think of this as a journey in Adhyatma. You know, and they go together. So you use Adhishtanam Tatha Karta knowledge here to experience Upadrashta Anumantacha Varta Bhokta Maheshwaram. Very true. Uh, now coming to the uh, Varna system. We, we had in uh, our fourth chapter, Chatur Varna Maya Shushtam, Guna, yes. Karma, Bhagasha, right? So based on Guna and Karma, the Varna is decided. Here, in fact, Krishna has given responsibilities for every Varna. Brahman, Vaishya, Shudra, like Kushi Goraksha Vanijam, Pari, hmm. uh, Kushi Goraksha Vanijam, Vaishya Karma Sabhavajam, Pari Charyatmakam Karma, Shudra Syapi Sabhavajam. So here, uh, I mean, in my opinion, the Varna system as described here in the Gita or elsewhere was always a horizontal concept. There was nothing, uh, it was a basically a concept for uh, uh, helping everyone understand their Swadharma, which is also beautifully explained in the Bhagavad Gita and also for a, a fruitful ecosystem. Yeah. For fruitful ecosystem hmm. so it was always horizontal in nature not one is above the other or one is below the other somewhere it got twisted maybe in the british rule and you know it became the vertical that is this is superior and this is inferior and this is more even more inferior so hmm. what is your take on it was was it uh, uh, horizontal as i think it was uh in those days in the okay. days of Mahabharat or Ramayana. okay so if i were to give answer uh, in krishna style you know murari stritiya pantha I would say it is neither horizontal nor vertical. Okay. It is, you know, is. Sat, you know, that's how it is, which is to say in our, and, and Upanishad talks about these examples and everywhere. So in our body, okay, what is the most important? And Upanishad talks about it. So the prana, uh, so, you know, like a prana goes on holiday, vacation. 
uh, eyes go on a vacation, ears go on a vacation, wak, vacha goes on a vacation, you know, breathing goes on, a so prana is a breathing that goes on vacation. And what happens instantly they realize as a short term, prana can go, cannot go on a vacation. Ears can go on a vacation for some time. Eyes can go on a vacation for some time. You can close your eyes. Mouth, you can go on, go, can go on vacation for some time. Prana cannot go on a vacation. So this, yes, yeah. this is actually experiment. This is experiment in the lab, so to say. Hey, you say, which one is more important? All are important. Which one is more important? Right? So in that sense, you are doing it. So therefore, I'm saying it's neither vertical nor horizontal in, in that sense. Now, uh, if you look, read at, say, Manusmurti, or other grantha, they talk about it. One point I want to add is, yes, British used, see, British wanted something to put down Indians. If yeah. the Varnashram system was not there, if Varna system was not there, they, were, they have used, they would have used something. You know, I see this all the time. See, for example, my research work, I mean, Mahabharata Ramayana is impeccable. But somebody who wants to find the holes because that's how that person wants to become popular, they will find the holes. That is not a problem. So British would have found something. But the point I want to mention is it will be not appropriate to completely blame British for the problem of Varna. Because in Mahabharata also, you can see the discussion of a Varna sometime even maybe in a jest, but somebody say, hey, you are Suta Putra. Yeah. You know, which means which means you are kind of doing it. It's not like you are not doing it. But it was more in a jolly mood in some sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we're saying. For example, in an Indian context, we, we might say, oh, that is from the northern India. And the, somebody from there will say, he, this guy is from a southern India. And you and me will say, hey, we are from neither. neither. Neither from south nor from the north. And somebody says, so where are you from? <laughs> right we are right in the middle you know so yeah so that's i'm saying it's not a vertical it's not a horizontal couple of points i want to add murare stritya pantha in that fashion krishna takes it to higher level so the, the what is there that's why bhagavad gita is so exceptional and a radical grantha complete complete and radical okay it's an improvisation you know sita pradnya is sita pradnya or brahma nirvan is bhagavad gita's contribution Bhagavad Gita's contribution. That's why it is a radical grantha. So Varana uh, is there, is what is. Just like you need eyes, you need ears, you need nose, you need mouth, and you need a stomach to digest it. You need, so actually in the Upanishadic story, you see the legs went on a vacation, the hands went on a vacation, stomach went on a vacation. Now what happens? So if you understand this concept, then we will, what to your point, we will not say one is above, one is below. Like our garbage collection, in a typical American sense also, I don't think that is a job that somebody strives for it. Like, oh, I want to, when I grow, I want to become a garbage collector. But imagine if that's, that process, that service, that aspect of our social life is not there, what a nightmare the life would be. Picking up vegetables from the farm is not easy. But when American government changes the rules, Okay, for the immigrants, especially from south of the border and so on. Suddenly the vegetables become uh, unavailable in the marketplace. Their rates go up and something like this. So there is no higher and lower in that sense, in that sense. And uh, quickly, the Bhag Bhagavad, not Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Puran uh, gives a minimum common program. Yes. So you, so you actually, I will ask you to describe, or actually, Bhagavad Gita. This particular chapter describes what Brahman does, what uh, Kshatriya does, or does meaning expected to do, and Vaishya and Shudra. And remember, go back to fourth chapter. It's a Chatur Varnam Maya Srustam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. Of course, everyone has to have a certain attributes Guna, and everyone must do Karma. But in this uh, 18th chapter, if you look at the descriptions of, and you know that those by heart descriptions of uh, Brahman and Kshatriya, the emphasis is on a guna, yes. which means the, still the person will do karma and not just karma of a certain kind. That Brahman has to do karma of all kinds. Like Agastya Rushi, it is said he, he sustained two Varnas. He was taking a kudar, you know, he's taking a digging tool and was doing agriculture, which is uh, Vanijja, mm -hmm. right? And he was also 
a knowledgeable of Shastra and teaching. So he was doing the Brahmana karma also. So everyone will do all the karma. Your emphasis may be somewhere, but you have to do it. Same thing from Ashrama. Quickly, I want to make two points related to this. So there is a minimum common program that Bhagavad Puran describes. For example, Ayusa Satya Mastaya Akama Krodha Lobata Bhuta Priya Hitehacha Dharma Oyam Sarva Varni Kaha. For all Varanas, this is a common program. Okay. And Niyamak Kulanandana Sarvashrama Prayuktoyam Niyamak Kulanandana Madhava Sarva Bhuteshu Mano Vak Kaya Sayyama. Okay. So that is again for all Ashramas. And so, so that is a common program, common program that is given. And I would also la quickly last point, nature versus nurture. So nature is kind of like, just like we talked about our starting point, you know, the life that we, particular place, particular parents, we took birth. Let's say that's given. Let's think of this as a nature. At least for this lifetime, you don't have a choice. But with a nurture, you can modify, which means you can modify your varna. Okay, so nobody has stopped you. Just take the appropriate tapasya that is required. Don't keep on complaining and do what you want. Nobody yes, has stopped Swadharma, you. Your Swadharma has to guide your varna actually because you always have a choice Correct. of choosing what you want to be. Correct. So uh, that was a nice discussion actually. And uh, I think uh, coming to the end of the session, almost to the end, uh, hmm. uh, my, my most favorite uh, shlok, you know that, after giving all the uh, the entire reciting the Bhagavad Gita, all the 18 chapters, at the end of it, he says, Itite Jnanam Akhyatam, Krishna says, Bhagavan Krishna, Guyat Guyataram Maya, Mimru Shaita Dasheshenam, Yathechasi Tathakuru. Hmm. I have given you this knowledge, this deep philosophical knowledge. Think about it, mull over hmm. it, and do what you think is right. So, how beautifully does Krishna talk about free will, isn't it? So I always think that it is free will that creates destiny. It is never versus or and. It is always created. Uh, the, it is free will that creates our destiny, is what I think. You want to say something about it? Yeah, I would say in this, if you take this shlok, hmm. uh, say it again. What is the starting point? Idam. Itite jnanam akhyatam. Itite jnanam akhyatam. Guyat dasheshena yathechasi tathakuru. You can take this shlok and describes the three and only three. I mean, if you want to split them further, you can split in 15 and 26 and 30 and 80. That's not a problem. But in a completion sense, three foundations of Sanatana, three foundations of Hindu Dharma. It, 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 that is the give, now Krishna, through Sattva, Raja, Tama, Buddhi, Dhyana, uh, Sankhya has given you, the given us the foundation of a Niti, Niti Dharma. That is one foundation. Okay, then he says, Yathe chasi, the way you feel, that is a free will, freedom of thought, freedom of action, freedom of your decision making. So that is the, the second foundation. The Niti Dharma, the conviction in the Niti Dharma is first foundation. Freedom of thought, Vichar Swatantriya is the second foundation. Therefore, he's saying Yathe chasi. And then not to forget Tatha Kuru, do. You know, therefore, I... I may not laugh on their faces, but internally I laugh when somebody says, Bhai, mai to sir bhakti karta hu. I only want to do bhakti. Main karma yoga hai mere liye nahi hai. What nonsense. It's a stupidity when people say that. Okay. For example, <laughs> karma, jnana, okay, dhyana through all this and jnana. See, this these people, such people fall into uh, uh fall into uh, your favorite shlok. Idam te natapaskaya na bhaktaya kadaya. There you go. Idam te natapaskaya. Right in this chapter again. Idam te natapaskaya na bhaktaya kadaya na na chashu shushuve vacham na chamam yo bhyasuyeti. But they think na bhaktaya kadaya na but they think they are bhakta. That is the problem. Okay, so so this stroke, so I will stop on this and then let, let you add and finish. Uh, but this particular shlok, itite jnanam akhyatam, that is that he has through this multiple times, sometimes sometime it appears tiring, it appears repetitive, repetitive. Whether he is discussing Stita Pradnya, whether he is discussing Kshetra Kshetra Yoga and what is Jnana, whether he is discussing Daivi Pravruti, whether he is discussing Bhakta, whether, it doesn't matter what he is discussing. Krishna, it appears like he is giving the same set. That is that Niti Dharma. Abhayam Sattva Samashuddhir Jnana Yoga Vyavastiti Dhanam Dhamasya Karmasya Swadhyayas Toparzo. Everywhere it is the 
the niti that is given. So that is that niti dharma conviction you must have. Okay, then uh, see the freedom of thought. Krishna is saying all of this and just finally giving, hey, now you do what you want, but do. And that why do? Somebody says, no, I don't want to do it. No, you don't have a choice. You naturally just sit idly. That is a tamasic karma you are doing. You are doing it. Uh, I, I will stop on that. Uh, all yeah. yours. Correct. And at the end, of course, uh, uh, Arjun agrees that nashta moha spritir labdha. So my moha, my delusion has gone now and I will do as you say. So that's no, that is bhakti. That is bhakti. Now, and uh, uh, emphasis on uh, nashta moha, attachment, delusion. So that has gone. So that is the reason why Arjun uh, got the uh, vishada, right? Not because he was a coward. He was a very courageous person. But because he was deluded, because he was attached, he got the moha, his, his, his own people, his own uncles and uh, uh, teachers, etc. Seeing them on the battlefield. Yeah, and moha was gone through Jnana Makhyatam. Jnana Makhyatam, yes, yes. So that's how it ends. And uh, I think wonderful. Uh, thankfully, as I said in the beginning, uh, because of Ayamba by Krupa, we could complete this journey and maybe... Uh, we're looking forward to much many more such journeys uh, together in, in discussion with uh, on different topics. Uh, just to summarize the key takeaways of the Gita in a couple of minutes is uh, we started, as I said, with uh, his delusion and then the powerful concept of at the, the concept of a powerful Atma, the indestructible nature of Atma, which is nothing but the Ishwari Tattva. So here uh, I would like to say we have to differentiate between Deva and Ishwar also. Because Ishwar is something Nirakar. And here, Krishna is a proxy of a Ishwar, actually. Because Dev is somebody who is uh, Sakar, Sagun. Whereas Ishwar is something, someone who is Nirakar, Nirguna. It's, it's a Shakti of which Ausha we have in us, which is the Atma, in the form of our Atma. And which, which is such a powerful thing to remember all of our lives and every moment. So that it springs all of us into action of doing what is right. So for doing what is right, we have the concept of Swadharma, Nishkama Karma Yoga, uh, being a Sthita Pradna, giving up the desire for action of fruits, being detached, uh, 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 exercising our free will throughout uh, because it is our free will that will create our destiny going ev every moment in our life. Also, Krishna has told us to uh, uh, the Bhakti Yoga where he tells us that, you know, Yomam Pashtati Sarvatra Sarvam Chamai Pashtati, surrender everything to me. And here again, I would emphasize that Krishna is proxy to Ishwar. So surrender everything to Ishwar, to your own Atma, try to go inwards, try to do Dhyana, meditate, try to find uh, your Ishwari Tattva within yourself. Go beyond the Vedas, beyond the Karmakand. That's how you will go beyond the three Gunas, the Sattva, Raja and Tamaguna. And that's where we need to be, all of us. That should be our aim to rise above the three gunas. And uh, this will not happen in, from, in one life. This will happen through many lives, many rounds of jnana, dhyana, uh, karma, uh, uh, bhakti, uh, and various yogs and sadhana that we do in our lives. And uh, let us hope that we have a wonderful journey ahead of many lives with our many masters. As Brian Wise uh, says, very uh, you know, who, who's a follower I am and I have been and I, you have been for many years. So we'll end here. Uh, dhanyavad to our audience. And let me end uh, uh, with a shlok. Vayur anilam amrutam athedam bhasmantam shariram om kratosmara krutam smara kratosmara krutam smara jagdamba jagdamba. Jagdamba. Jagdamba.